What's going on guys? Sean back here with Everything REI and today I'm going to show you guys my little experiment that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Basically during shelter in place we've had so much free time on our hands that I decided to get back into my engineering roots and to create some code to make our lives as real estate investors a little bit easier. So basically the task at hand is to help extract some phone numbers from a list that I have. Basically, if you guys are trying to find more ways to get more deals, one of the best and most popular methods right now is to get a list of phone numbers and then just start pounding those phone numbers. So instead of spending about a dollar for every single time you wanna mail somebody a letter, you can basically call hundreds of people in one afternoon and basically get the same result. But the problem is, usually when we get our list, it only comes with a name, mailing address, and property address, as well as the statistics for the house itself. So we can see how many rooms they have, how many bathrooms they have, but we can't really get their phone numbers unless we pay for a skip tracing service. And skip tracing services can be pretty expensive, sometimes costing 15 to 20 cents per record, which means that if I have a name and an address, it's gonna cost me 15 to 20 cents to get that phone number. Well, luckily for us, there's a website that gives us this phone number for free. And if you guys want a tutorial on how to find phone numbers, check out my video over there where I go over how to skip trace phone numbers through the MLS. But the problem with doing that is it takes a long, long time. Imagine going through a thousand entries, having to copy and paste names over and over and over again, and then searching through a list of all these potential people and then finding their phone number, copying that, and then putting it onto Excel spreadsheet. So I said, why not automate that? And that's exactly what I did. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how the initial process works, how my code works, and the results that come out of it. All this and more coming right up. All right guys, so the first step that we need to do is we need to get a fresh list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go onto Realist. Realist is a property tax software that is given to you if you have MLS access. If you don't, I'm pretty sure you can get a list very similar to this by just calling a title agent and asking for these certain criteria. But basically what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at some properties. I don't want something that's owner occupied because recently the people I've been calling have been so emotionally attached to their properties that they actually get mad at me for calling them. So we're going to go with non-owner occupied properties. Uh, property City, I just chose somewhere near my house. So Union City, I live somewhere in the Bay Area, South Bay here. And it's Union City is about two cities away from where I'm at. Um, choosing a typical home, I don't want something too big. I don't want something too small. So 1,100 to 1,500 square feet for the building size. I also want lots that are bigger than 5,000 square feet. If your lot isn't big enough, then there's not really much you can do on the property. And I want the recording date to be before 1995. So people who have had these properties have had them for over 25 years. They don't live in it and it's a standard house. So I kind of know what I'm getting myself into. I click search and basically I get this beautiful list of names, property addresses, but like I said, no phone numbers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this list and we're gonna to try to get these phone numbers. So I'm gonna do a quick export. It's gonna give me all these beautiful information. Okay, so this is basically our list. It's in CSV format. As you can see here, we have some of these names here. We have property addresses, we have the owner names, we have when it was recorded. And all this Hitler information is not really that important because we don't really care. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to rename this file. Name is something simple like Union City. Right now, one of the limitations of my code is that I have to hard code all the names. In the future, I can add some simple GUI functionality so that when you run the file, a nice little GUI pops up and you can browse and choose your file. But for now, this works. Okay, so we change this name real quick. And then we run it. So before I run the code, I wanna show you what we normally would have had to do. So for example, let's look at this first person, Richard Finks, um, and this is the property address, 2206 Farrell Avenue. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go to our website. We go to fastpeoplesearch.com and let's say Union City. Let's see what shows up. Okay, so then you look here, you have Maria Finks, um, Amy O'Connor, Alma Finks, Daniel O'Connor, 
So you can kind of tell like the Finks family is somewhere here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Alma Finks, Alma Finks. Alma Finks. See, I had to like scroll down a little bit to find the actual person. So Alma Finks is here. I click on her <clears throat> and I can see some information about where she lives and you can get her phone number from here. So then boom, I just grab this phone number, copy it and paste it into a link. Now this took me maybe 20, 30 seconds. Now I'll multiply it by a thousand and imagine someone having to do that by sitting on a desk every single day. And I say, F that. If you can do it automatically, just do it automatically. So let's see what our code does and let's see if it works. So then as you can see right here on the left, we are seeing that it's going through every single line, going to the website itself, looking through everything, getting the data, and then looking through a bunch of these libraries. You don't really need to know how, how these things works really underneath the hood, but I just have this nice output here so that we know what's working, what's not working. Uh, don't worry too much about what these res codes mean. That was for me when I was debugging. Sometimes there's different errors and then these errors will tell me what the error is. So for example here, 200 means it's good. Uh, 429 code. Now here's a problem with using my code as it is right now. I'm not using any kind of crazy proxy stuff. I'm not using some kind of third-party VPN and I'm just using my own IP address. So by using this code, I'm actually going to this website a whole bunch of times every single minute and eventually, the website can detect that you are kind of a bot and you're doing some kind of non-human activities. So after a while, it's gonna throw you this 429 code. 429 code basically means that you failed the bot check, now you need to do a bot check on this website. So basically what I'm gonna do is you can either copy and paste it here and then go to the website itself and complete the bot check or you can just paste it because I already copied it automatically with my code. So let's go to Google Chrome and let's go here and let's just paste. As you can see, the address is already pasted here. So let's see, okay, am I a human? Yeah, I'm a human. This is kind of like a way to trick the programming so that yes, you are using a bot, but also you are a human. So you can pass it this way. And then it continues. So then I just paste it again. Oops. And let's just continue here by pressing enter. And it continues. So basically by passing the bot check, we just click the bot check, press enter, and let it continue. Unfortunately right now, the program again is not super robust. So every 20 names or so, I'm gonna have to do another one of these bot checks. So it can be kind of annoying. It doesn't just completely run by itself, but it's better than me having to do this manually. So yes, it's a little bit inconvenient, but not 100% inconvenient. So while this is running, I wanna know, Will this bot program help you with your real estate investing business? If so, let me know by writing a yes down in the comments down below. If I get enough responses, I might release this bot program for my YouTube audience as a thanks for you guys for supporting this channel. And while we're at it, let me know what kind of other bot programs do you think would be helpful for you and your business? What things are you not automating that you wish there was an easy software to use that could take that task away from your daily routine? Again, leave that comment down in the comment section below. So about every 12 names or so, that's when I have to refresh this, which is pretty annoying. So imagine if you have a list of a thousand, then this might take a while because every 10 or 12 entries, you do have to do this bot check and continue. Now, if I think about this, there are some ways to get around this problem. So one is to use different proxies. Proxies basically means that you are faking your IP address and then you're sending different IP addresses to get this uh, data from. But you have to pay money for it. And the whole point of this is that I want to do something on a super, super cheap. And also this works. So if you really hate this, you could probably send this to your virtual assistant and have them do this for you. Trust me, your virtual assistant will love you for this. If I had a VA do this for me, it'll take about a month to get all these entries done. And here, as you can see, it's only going to be a couple of minutes. So it's really not that bad. Okay. As you can see, we have hit this bot check too many times. So actually, as it progresses, you have to do more and more complex checks. So now they're making me actually look for cars. So before I could actually create a bot that would be able to click this button by itself, but I couldn't figure out a way to create a bot to complete those crazy complex bot checks. And of course, that's the whole point of having the bot checks in the first place. They wanna make sure there's a real human behind going to this website. So 
That's why eventually I decided no more proxy checks. Let's just go straight up and we'll do this semi-manually. So I don't have to do this part, but I do have to complete the bot checks. Okay, we're finally done with our script. It took us about 25 minutes or so, and I actually cut out a lot of the things in between to save some time for this video. Now this could have been done a lot quicker. I actually added some timers to make it take more time before I go for the next query. But to be honest, I'm not sure if that actually works and I might be just wasting my time. So in the future, maybe I'll remove those extra time to wait before getting the next query and I should just send out a whole bunch in quick succession. Since I'm getting the bot checks anyway. Now let's do the big reveal and see if all of our efforts were worth it. So it basically comes out in an output file right here, output.csv and bam, here it is. So as you can see here, we have some amazing phone numbers for our properties. We have the property address, which is actually different than the tax address because sometimes these people obviously don't live in these houses anymore, but we have their phone number right here. We have their names and we have some blanks. So what do these blanks mean? Well, sometimes when we go through this process, we don't actually get these people uh, through the general search. So maybe instead of looking through their property address, maybe we'll look through their names and then we'll see if there's any of these properties that line up. But instead of having to manually search for all these numbers, now we only have to look for these blank holes. Now, sometimes we have no names here and somehow we saw phone numbers. Unfortunately, my code isn't very smart and it would actually just try to match this with the phone number. And if there is no name, then it will just use the first phone number that it gets. I could do some work to make it better, but that's for a later time. For now, usually if there's no name, it means that there is some kind of trust or there is some kind of do not call list. So for best practices, don't call these people, just remove them from your list. And that's basically it. As you can see here, this program basically got most of these names. I'm very happy with the results and it makes our lives a lot easier. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you really did enjoy it. If you did, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this one. I release real estate investing content multiple times a week to help you learn more about the business and to help you become a real estate investing boss. Again, if you guys thought this tool was helpful and if you guys want to copy, please write yes down in the comments down below. If I get enough yeses and enough interaction, then maybe I'll think about releasing this to the public. And I also want to know, what are some other tools that can be useful for your business? What are some of the things that can be automated that you're doing manually every single day and you're sick of it? I have a lot of free time. We're still in quarantine and I want to do my best to help you guys out. So please let me know. Thanks again for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you next time. Take care.